If we define psychology as a formal study of the mind and a more systematic approach to understanding and curing mental conditions, then the ancient Greeks were certainly leading proponents. As with many scientific studies, Aristotle was at the forefront of developing the foundations of the history of psychology. Aristotle's psychology, as would be expected, was intertwined with his philosophy of the mind, reasoning and Nicomachean ethics, but the psychological method started with his brilliant mind and empirical approach. Aristotle lived from 384 to 322, was born in Macedon, in what is now northern Greece, but spent most of his adult life in Athens. His writings cover a broad range of subjects spanning the natural sciences, philosophy, linguistics, economics, politics, psychology and the arts. As the founder of the Peripatetic School of Philosophy in the Lyceum in Athens, he began the wider Aristotelian tradition that followed, which set the groundwork for the development of modern science. Little is known about Aristotle's life. He was born in the city of Stagira in northern Greece during the Classical period. His father, Nicomachus, died when Aristotle was a child, and he was brought up by a guardian. At 17 or 18 he joined Plato's Academy in Athens and remained there till the age of 37. Shortly after Plato died, Aristotle left Athens and, at the request of Philip II of Macedon, tutored his son Alexander the Great beginning in 343 BC. He established a library in the Lyceum which helped him to produce many of his hundreds of books on papyrus scrolls. His life in Athens divides into two periods. First as a member of Plato's Academy 367 to 347 and later as director of his own school, the Lyceum. The intervening years were spent mainly in Assos and Lesbos, and briefly back in Macedon. His years away from Athens were predominantly taken up with biological research and writing. Aristotle identified the three critical elements which make someone a good communicator, ethos, pathos, and logos. Thousands of years ago, ethos is essentially your credibility. That is, the reason people should believe what you're saying. In some cases, ethos comes merely from your rank within an organization. More commonly, though, today's leaders build ethos most effectively by demonstrating technical expertise in a specific area and by displaying strong levels of integrity and character. Pathos is making an emotional connection. Essentially, the reason people believe that what you're saying will matter to them pathos has the greatest influence on followers' perception of their leader's effectiveness as a communicator. Logos is your mode for appealing to others' sense of reason, ergo the term logic. Employing strengths in strategic thinking, problem solving, and analytical skills are how today's leaders express logical ideas in clear and compelling enough terms to influence outcomes. These three elements of communication reinforce one another. Judged on the basis of their content, Aristotle's most important psychological writings probably belong to his second residence in Athens, and so to his most mature period. His principal work in psychology, De Anima, reflects in different ways his pervasive interest in biological taxonomy and his most sophisticated physical and metaphysical theory. Aristotle's psychology, what he calls the study of the soul, occupies a prominent place both in his own philosophy and in the Western philosophical tradition as a whole. In his own system, psychology is the culmination of metaphysics and natural science. For Aristotle, living things are the paradigm of natural objects and substances in general, and so offer the best case for the application of his theories. Psychology also serves as a foundation for the rest of his philosophy. The nature of Aristotelianism. The extent to which Aristotelian thought has become a component of civilization can hardly be overestimated. To begin, there are certain words that have become indispensable for the articulate communication of thoughts, experiences, and problems. Some words still carry the Greek form. Whereas others have become established in their more important meanings as Latin equivalents of Aristotle's own words. 
The centuries-long impact of Aristotelian schooling lies at the root of the establishment of the vocabulary and these constitute only a small sample of terms that still carry the mark his philosophy. Beyond language, features that cumulatively or severally characterize Aristotelianism include, in philosophical methodology, a critical approach to previous, contemporary, or hypothetical doctrines. The raising and discussing of doctrinal difficulties. The use of deductive reasoning proceeding from self-evident principles or discovered general truths. And syllogistic forms of demonstrative or persuasive arguments. In epistemology, or the theory of knowledge, Aristotelianism includes a concentration on knowledge either accessible by natural means or accountable for by reason. An inductive, analytical empiricism or stress on experience, in the study of nature including the study of humans, their behavior and organizations. Leading from the perception of contingent individual occurrences to the discovery of permanent, universal patterns, and the primacy of the universal. That which is expressed by common or general terms. In metaphysics, or the theory of the ultimate nature of reality. Aristotelianism involves belief in the primacy of the individual in the realm of existence, in the applicability to reality of a certain set of explanatory concepts, in the soul as the inseparable form of each living body in the vegetable and animal kingdoms, in activity as the essence of things, and in the primacy of speculative over practical activity. In the philosophy of nature Aristotelianism denotes an optimistic position concerning nature's aims and its economy, believing in the perfection and in the eternity of the heavenly. Geocentric spheres, perceiving them as driven by intelligent movers, as carrying in their circular movements the stars, the sun, the planets, and the moon, and as also influencing the sublunary world. And holding that light bodies rise naturally away from the center of the earth, while heavy bodies move naturally toward it with a speed related to their weight. In aesthetics, ethics, and politics, Aristotelian thought holds that poetry is an imitation of what is possible in real life. That tragedy, by imitation of a serious action cast in dramatic form, achieves purification through fear and pity. That virtue is a middle between extremes, that human happiness consists primarily in intellectual activity and secondarily in the exercise of the virtues. And that the state is a self-sufficient society, necessary for humans to achieve happiness. Until next time stay safe and don't forget to smile.